Welcome to another Southern California Prep Insider Football Podcast. Tommy and Shotgun here. Obviously, I'm playing a little under the weather today, Shotgun, so you're going to have to help me out as much as possible. Again, apologize for the squirrely voice. Shotgun, how are you feeling, though? I'm feeling great. You know, I'm going to be like that that workhorse running back. Give me the ball 35 times. I'll carry it for you. Let you take the day off, and uh, you'll go get us a W here. <laughs> All right, so usually this would be the part of the podcast where we give our top tens, but guess what, Shotgun? What's happening? We already did it last week, and there were no new That's games. That's right, of course. No new so, games, so we'll, we'll keep the same top ten. No no big changes from last week. Nobody, No big suspensions or injuries to, to note, so I, I think the top ten stays the same. Yeah, so top ten. We'll stay the same uh, this week, but for now, we're going to head on over to San Clemente, where Beverly Fam is. Thanks, Tommy. Football season is just starting up again, and we had some scrimmages go on last week. I just wanted to give a shout out to Modern Day versus Fountain Valley. Totally not biased at all because Fountain Valley was my alma mater, but Trinity League schools will do what Trinity League schools do, and I'll have my predictions for you later on. But first off, I got caught up with Coach Ortiz here at San Clemente. The Tritons have been doing super well the past four years, bringing home two league titles, a CIF Southern Section title, and a state championship. Let's take a look. All right, Coach, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So with NFL preseason going on right now and all the hype surrounding Sam Darnold, how does it feel to watch your guys play at the professional level? You know, it's just a, a great opportunity to watch a kid, you know, live his dream. You know, the family's done a great job raising Sam and, and be able to, like, last Thursday, uh, last Friday, actually, saw him and Sean Harlow going against each other, two guys who were played on this field not too long ago. It's just a blessing as a coach to kind of be along for that ride to a certain extent, but also an opportunity to recognize the, the hard work of the parents and hard work of the young man who got to that point. With uh, Sam Darnold and Jack Sears legacies, do you think that your quarterbacks have more pressure on their backs right now? Yeah, you know, just a little bit. You know, our, one of our nicknames is QBU. You know, we've had six quarterbacks get D1 offers in the last 10 years, and, and those players know when they come to San Clemente High School and they get under center that there is a lot of opportunity, but also a lot of pressure. And uh, I think college coaches recognize that our school is a must stop when it comes to quarterback recruiting, and, and Brendan's that next guy in line, you know, going to Oklahoma State. But when the success of Jack and Sam and and, and Chase Reddick and Travis Wilson has done nothing but raise the bar of this program and, and the level of play for our quarterbacks. San Clemente is such a tight-knit community and everyone rallies around the one town, one team slogan. What does it mean to you to be able to coach here? It's special. You know, I, I came here in 2000. I've had a couple opportunities to leave, and but for me, this is home. And, uh, you know, to have the city wrap their arms around our players, both through good and bad, and, and to be on a Friday night when the city shuts down or be at the homecoming parade where they shut down the main street, it's something that you can't find anywhere in Southern California. It's unique. It's special. And I always remind our players that, you know, it's bigger than us and that we represent our school, we represent our community. And uh, for them to go out and play here on a Friday night, like this Friday night, a home opener against Oceanside, they're excited about the opportunity and people in town are excited to come, you know, watch the Tritons compete. So you guys are heading into the season with new uniforms, correct? Right, yeah. What prompted the change? I just, we, tr we try and do it every couple years. You know, our, our, our Boots Club does a great job fundraising, and it's a way to kind of get back to the players who are part of that process as well. We, we, we set goals through our fundraising period of what items we want to get, and for the kids this year's new uniforms. And so every two, three years, we kind of get something new and fresh and work the other ones down the line, but it's something, just an opportunity to give back to the kids who uh, put in all the time and effort in the fundraising aspect of it. The Tritons are going up against Oceanside this week in the season opener. How are you feeling about the season? Uh, it's, you know, the first opener is, you know, Oceanside. It's a home opener on Friday night. You know, we call it the battle for the base. You know, Oceanside is a very, very respected program down in San Diego. And every every time we play them, it's been a tough game back and forth. And I expect nothing but the, the same thing on Friday night. And for our kids, you know, I think after Friday night, I kind of tell what kind of team we are. You know, we do have some veterans coming back. We have some new players. But um, for us, every year is new. Every year is fresh. And and, uh, you know, you play a quality team like Oceanside, it's going to test you. And, and I'll know more about 1030 on Friday night, kind of where we're at. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. I right, appreciate it. Thank you for having me. One, two, three, four. Your preparation is going to determine your success. Right? So moving on to predictions this week, we have J. Sarah versus Corona Del Mar, Orange Lutheran versus San Juan Hills, Servite versus Bakersfield, Santa Margarita versus Downey. Pretty much I'm going to predict that every Trinity League team is going to win in their season opener. <laughs> Back to you, Tommy. All right, Chaka, and there's a little report from San Clemente. What do you think of them? You know, I, I think that they have some pieces there that, that could be pretty good this year. Uh, bringing back Costello 
and uh, you know, seeing what he can do and how he develops in, in the second year running that offense will be interesting to me. All right, we'll go east now to Chaparral where Jessica Lucero is. Jessica, what's up? Yeah, thanks, Tommy. I'm here at Chaparral High School where I was lucky enough to speak with head coach Andrew Raymer here. Now, it is Coach Raymer's first year here as the head coach, but this definitely isn't his first time here. This isn't new territory to him. He has played here for his four years in high school. He's coach for the freshman JV and varsity team. He said ever since he got that call back in March that he's been very excited and he's had a countdown on his calendar on the website just counting down to that first matchup of the season now last week they did face Hillcrest in a scrimmage and he said it went well they had a lot of learning experiences from that so let's take a look and see what he had to say coach Raymer it's your first year as the official head coach here but this isn't your first time playing for Chaparral or coaching Chaparral any of that now can you kind of just walk us through what it's been like playing here and coaching for freshman JV and varsity yeah, so I played here as a student athlete from 2001 to 2004, graduated in 2005, uh, went out and played college football in Virginia, and then came back in 2009, um, freshman O-line coach, varsity assistant coach, and then from 2009 up, I have JV head coach, JV special teams coordinator, JV OC, varsity OC, strength and conditioning coach. So whatever the coaches at the time needed me to do, um, that that's what I did. I was you know, mainly on special teams and offense, so I'm still uh, picking the brains of the defensive coaches. Uh, I know how to attack defense is, and I'm just learning how to uh, scheme a defense, right? We're getting there, we're getting yeah. there. Yeah. So you said you have a six-month-old. We were talking a little before. He said he's, he's got that six-month-old that you had in March, is that correct? Or oh, in February. Yeah. And you were named head coach in March. Yeah. There it is. What was it like when you received that phone call saying you were going to be head coach? Um, it, I was at school. I was told to come up to the athletic director's office. And in your mind, you're like, all right, this is either good or bad. You know, like... <laughs> Um, and it was good, of course, uh, but the transition's been easy with the, the newborn. Uh, my wife, she's an all-star, she, she, you know, she, she takes care of everything at home, um, help around when I can on the weekends, you know, late at night, early in the morning. I wake up super early, so I try to get some stuff done at that time, so just to help around. But yeah, he's six months, uh, you know, he's like a future, like NFL, he's already weighing like 22 pounds. <laughs> and 29 inches long so he's he's a big boy so uh. future baller over here now do you have any sort of standout moment that has just sort of resonated with you since you have been the head coach here um uh, i would say we, we threw a, a spring game for the first time ever at chaparral broke the teams into a blue white team um that was probably a big moment it was a big community support um we threw our first ever like a senior coaches like pool party. That was a fun time, um, you know, away from football. Just got to hang out, play some yard games, have some jokes, eat some food. And then this past weekend, uh, we did the meet the team barbecue, and there was all the players, parents. There was over 500 people there, so it was just a really cool experience. Uh, surreal, right? Who would you say are going to be some sort of standout players this upcoming season that we all really need to keep our eye out for? Uh, offensively, you know, we have Orlando Ornelas um, at, at quarterback for us. Um, we have a deep receiving group for him. Uh, Elgin Vasquez and Stanley Dixon running the ball. Uh, we have Elia McGow, who's probably our, our next big time offensive line recruit at Chaparral. And then defensively, you know, we're led by um, Zane Nofel, uh, Jordan White, Danny Sanchez, and then uh, our middle linebacker is only a sophomore gonna be the real deal Tristan uh, Ramirez and you guys have one of the most fun practices that I've ever seen always blasting loud music out here is there any sort of class clown that you have out there uh, yeah Danny Sanchez is probably the one that makes us laugh the most uh, we had to meet the team barbecue and they our senior skit where they sort of just make fun of the coaches um, he was the funniest guy out there <laughs> Um, himself and uh, Jordan White making fun of uh, our defensive coordinator, Coach Hess, and wide receiver coach, Coach Bird. They were, they were good, 
Got to keep our eye out for that. Maybe a little stand-up comedy at one point. We can have an op- in for an interview. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what would you say, you know, you've seen tons of teams at this point come in and out of Chaparral. What would you say is really the difference between all of those teams and this 2018 team? You know, in the years past, we've had a lot of, like, major D1, like, offensive linemen um, that we sort of relied on uh, for the leadership and, um, you know, captains and stuff like that. This, this team is led by our skill players. Our, our lines are young, um, and they're doing a fantastic job. Um, they're not the, the big-time D1 guys. Uh, I mean, Orlando is UC Davis, which is a great school. Um, but whatever we're asking them to do, they're doing it with a smile on their face. Like you said, we try to keep it a little bit light, have some music out here, um, workouts. The coaches get in the workouts. we got a young staff, so uh, we try to keep uh, – everything in the right spirit positive right yeah i saw you guys pulling out the dance moves out there so that was pretty fun to watch now this last week you guys finally got to get out there and have your scrimmage against hillcrest how did that go it went well i mean it was a scrimmage so there's good and there's some bad um good the bad and the ugly the good the bad and the ugly right uh no but we you know we told orlando like hey don't run it so they were crashing a little bit, and then we told them, hey, you can, and he broke some big runs. So that was nice to see uh, the offense line to make some holes. We, we had some, some little injuries, so we were holding some kids out in certain positions where you can sort of tell um, the defense line was really young. At, um, so, But the, the linebacker stepped up, so it was, it was good to see, like, all right, the defense line's young in front of you, but you're still making plays and tackles. Um, but we're good. We, we, we had some good some good turnovers on defense. We scored some touchdowns on offense. Some young kids stepped up for us. Uh, it was what the scrimmage is all for. Exactly. And what are you looking forward to the most about, you know, actually, let's just do a little promotion over here. We have Coach Rammer, who is approaching 2,000 followers on Twitter. You yeah. just recently <laughs> tweeted out. It is game week with, I don't know, maybe 15 exclamation points. Safe to say you're pretty excited for this upcoming week. What are you looking forward to the most about playing Hemet on Friday? I'm just looking forward to just coming down, walking down those stairs, touching the our Puma statue. Um, we've had a countdown since I got the job of how many days until him it. It was in the triple digits. I don't know exactly what it was at, but now it's in singles, right? So we just talked about, you know, we're four days away, and uh, I, I don't know, it was probably 150 or 160 days. So it's just, uh, yeah, I woke up this morning. I'm an early, early riser, just really excited. It was game week finally. Do you have any uh, special tweet or any song maybe that you're going to be playing or tweeting out that day? Uh, last year, you know, it was, a, it was a different song every every game day. Um, the kids look forward to it, like, hey, what do you listen to this morning, Coach? Uh, this this first week, definitely, uh, we have an alumni that plays at Azusa Pacific named Ray Riley. He made a song uh, called Puma Pride. Uh, it's on iTunes. Uh, <laughs> there's your endorsement, Ray. Uh, but it's a, f- a great song. Uh, we're, it's our walkout song. So that's definitely going to be something blasting through uh, the truck Friday morning. Awesome. I look forward to hearing that. Best of luck to you. Thank you for your time, Coach. Thanks for coming out. Again, Chaparral will be hosting Hemet High School at home, so should be great to watch right there. I'm sure Coach Raymer will be keeping us updated with lots of live tweeting, <laughs> so make sure to follow him to get all those latest updates. Uh, some other action going on in the Southwestern League this week will be Mirada Valley facing off against Santiago, as well as Great Oak facing San Jacinto, so both of those should be great to watch. You know, it's a great time to be in the Southwestern League as well as covering the Southwestern League. Very thankful for that. That's all for me. Back to you, Tommy. Shotgun, what do you know about Chaparral? You know, I'm curious to see how the offensive line does without Justin Dietrich there. He was the center last year. He's at USC now, was a four- or five-star guy. You know, one of the best centers I've seen in the last five, six years. So how does that offensive line rebound without having him in the middle of it? And finishing up in the OC with Jay Sarah. Here are the lines. I'm here with Tariq Luckett, Jay Sarah. Tariq, tell the people about yourself. Um, I'm 17, go to JC High School, um, receiver, cornerback, class of 2019. So you play both ways. Well, do you have a preferred side of the ball? Um, not really. I just do whatever the team needs me to do to get on the field and help my team win. And you've got a lot of interest from school. So what are the type of things that are important to you looking at colleges? Um, just like overall, the interest in me, the wide receiver coach, you know, DB coach, whoever is going to be recruiting me and uh, going to be my coach there for four years, that's going to be a very, very big thing. Um, 
academics, of, of course, and my major, see where I wanted to go, see what they're doing, how they're doing, and that's, that's pretty much how I go. Like All right, so you've got a handful of offers already, but I'm going to ask you about the first one you got. Where were you when you found out, and who was the first person you called? Um, I was in the car with my dad when I got my first offer. He was actually yelling at me, and then I got a call from Coach Will, who, who used to work at San Jose, but now he was, works at Washington. And he called me, and my first person after I called was my mom. <laughs> How did your dad react? Did you have to pull the car over? <laughs> was it too excited? It was, uh, he, he went from yelling to actually really happy. It was, uh, it was actually good in my hands. Cause, uh, <laughs> so good timing for that phone call. Yes, it was. <laughs> um, so how, who would you compare your game to? Who are some of the guys you look up to? Um, I looked up to mostly Julio Jones. That's my favorite NFL receiver right now. He's uh, just dominant, always. No one ever can guard him when it's one-on-one. -on -one. Anything, he's doing everything he can to get the team to win. What about on the defensive side of the ball? Um, I look more like a, hmm, like a, I don't, I don't ever look from a defensive side to see. Let me see. Um, How about this? Could you guard yourself? No, I cannot guard myself. <laughs> I can. So nobody can guard you, not even you? Not even me. <laughs> All right, so senior season's coming up, you know, last who are all. What are you looking forward to this year? What are your goals for yourself personally for the team? Um, my goals this year is just to help in um, any way. Do all, I give it all I can on the field. Um, just I want to just go as far as we can, make it to the major state championship. And what's it going to be like? You know, it's your, it's your last time out here, that last first game, you know, all that kind of stuff. You got the first week coming up. So is it going to be emotional for you for, you know, your last senior season? Yes, of course. It's, it's been my home for four years. It's gonna be my last first game, last season here. It's gonna, it's really gonna be emotional when I get out here on the next week. And I'm putting you on the spot a little bit. What, what's something about you that most people don't know? You have like a hidden talent, something like that. Um, hidden talent. I really don't do much, but I play a lot of Fortnite. I'm pretty good at that. I knew you were gonna say Fortnite. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say Fortnite. Which, what's your favorite place to land? Greasy Grove. All right, there you heard it first. If you, if you're trying to find Tariq in Fortnite, you're gonna find him at the Greasy Grove. All right, heard it here first. All right, Shaka, so that was me talking to Tariq Luckett. What do you think of him? Tariq Luckett, you know, it, it, combining him with Muneer McLean on the other side gives the, the J. Sarah Lions, you know, a dynamic duo on the outside. Now they just have to get the ball to him. Uh, who's going to play quarterback there, and, and how does that situation shape up after losing their quarterback uh, last year uh, to graduation? Um, if they can – you can get someone to get the ball out to them and can find, can find some consistency there. I think that offense can be really good again this year. Yeah, and I'll speak to that. I got to see them play against Norco. Caden Bell, who's transferring from Servite, looks like the real deal. He'll be playing Columbia after this year, so I think they'll be okay in that regards. So shotgun outside for everybody's favorite part. Normally I get more in-depth than this, but obviously my brain – or my throat, excuse me, might explode um, if I continue <laughs> at this pace. It is the predictions. Um, we're going to predict all the games from the Fox Sports Go app, so you can watch them all uh, live on the Fox Sports Go app. The first one is going to be Tim View coming from Utah to come play uh, at St. John Bosco. And Tim View comes in having, you know, Coach Kerry Whittingham won three state titles in the last six years, but he's gone. Now it's up to Andy Stokes. He was 27 and nine in three seasons at Dixie High School in St. George, Utah. Uh, he's also most notably a, a former Mr. Irrelevant in the NFL draft was the very last pick in, I think, 2005. And that team only has four returning starters. They're all on offense, and none of them is the quarterback, though. So I think that's going to be you know, a pretty big blowout there. I think Bosco, you know, they're, they're christening that new $7.2 million stadium. I think they do it with, with a lopsided victory in this one. I agree. I've got Bosco next. We've got Westlake at Sierra Canyon. Westlake, you know, they have super versatile defender and in, in Gabriel Floyd. You know, they have uh, DB slash wide receiver Cameron Fabakulananen, who's going to Washington. You know, Marco Siderman comes in from Oaks Christian at the quarterback position. You know, that's a team of transfers that's got to gel together. However, I, I think that they can beat Sierra Canyon. Sierra Canyon is facing a tough schedule this year because three teams in their league just forfeited their right to compete in the, for the league title. So it's going to be, you know, they're automatically in the uh, championship game for that league. Uh, but they've got some uh, some pieces that they've got to build on. Some younger guys that have to play well. Sophomore Chayden Peary is back after leading the team to eight wins as a freshman quarterback last year. How does he develop as, develop as a sophomore? He's got some solid receivers in Corey Jones, J.J. Hernandez. But those guys might even be better on the defensive side. However, I think Westlake early in the season, just too much talent for him. I'm going to take Sierra Canyon here. I think they'll be good to go week uh, week zero, technically. Uh, next, smaller schools is Antelope Valley at Grace Brethren. This is a rematch from the CIF 
uh, Southern Section Division Eight title game last year, and Grace Brethren beat the brakes off Antelope Valley, 63 to 27 last year before losing the state to a bowl game. Uh, Grace Brethren lost some pieces though. They lost, uh, you know, some guys that transferred to other schools, some guys that are formerly from Hawkins and that went to Grace Brethren. Now they're at Narbonne. You know, just the the constant will of transfers in the Southern Section that there is. However, they still have some big pieces. Running back Lontrell Diggs ran for over 2,400 yards last uh, last year with 29 touchdowns. Quarterback Mike Zell threw for 1,873 yards and 22 touchdowns, only eight interceptions as a freshman last year. I think he'll be even better this year. And then on the defensive side, you got Jay Toy and Stanley Taufua, uh, who's a USC commit at the linebacker position. I think those two guys lead the defense against Antelope Valley. Antelope Valley has a couple nice pieces. Dylan Hall coming off the edge, six foot five defensive end. And then also wide receiver, running back, DB, do a little bit of everything. Jamal Bell, he's the guy that the Grace Brethren has to shut down. If they do that, I think they win. Yeah, I got Grace Brethren as well. Next, it's Upland and Labra. Upland has a ton of talent this year, probably the most talent in the Inland Empire, led by 2020 linebacker Justin Flo, one of the best linebackers in the country right now, and he's only a junior. They also have some offensive weapons, uh, running back Cameron Davis being looked at by some big schools, wide receiver Taj Davis is being is committed to Washington, so it's up to sophomore quarterback Cole Boop to step in and, and have a good year. He's got to you know, gotta fill up the slack there, and if he does, I think Upland can, can be the team to, to beat in the Inland Empire once again. On the other side, La Habra has Mr. Pick 6, though. Clark Phillips III, who had three pick sixes in one game last year. Uh, but they did lose their leading tackler to modern day. They lost their leading receiver to Mission Viejo. They got some key pieces returning. They got some other you know, uh, lesser-known transfers coming in. But I got Upland in this. I've got Upland as well. The final game, it's a game we will be. It'll be Chandler from Arizona flying in to take on Centennial from Corona. Top matchup this weekend. Uh, you know, Number six, Centennial on our top ten. Uh, or in my top 10, Matt Logan's high powered offense. How does that do without Tanner McKee running the show? You know, they weren't as good when he wasn't there last year. So how do they replace him? You know, they've always put up a lot of numbers with that, you know, super wide splits and up tempo offense. They got wide receiver Gary Bryant, who's a burner on the outside. On the defensive side, Drake Jackson is a guy I really like on that defensive line. But I'm taking Chandler in this. They're number 10 in the max prep reps uh, rankings for the for the nation. They've won back to back state titles. They got a BYU commit at quarterback in Jacob Conover. They've got a tight end committed to Texas and Braden Lebrock, who might be one of the best in the country. Uh, they got a couple other guys, Avery Carrington, Zach Bowers on the defensive side. They're committed to Mountain West schools. And then you add defensive tackle Matthew Polamau in the middle, younger brother of USC safety, Isaiah Polamau. He transfers over to Chandler and will just be a, you know, he's a six foot three six foot four guy who's 330 pounds in the middle of that defense i think that chandler's gonna be really good they should probably be they probably will be the best team in arizona this year and i think they'll beat centennial in week zero i'm gonna take the home team i will take centennial that is it for week zero and this podcast shotgun you got anything you want to say before we get out of here looking forward to getting back out and seeing some high school football this week should be fun week zero always has some unique matchups and, and i'm looking forward to seeing you know how it plays out this week and i'm looking forward to being able to talk again <laughs> hopefully by next week i will be okay we'll see you then for week one